I was walking the mountain, the Andes. A small children was uh, behind me shouting, Senor, Senor! With a beautiful smile, he opened his hand and there were three little potatoes ready to eat. I was nearly crying. I said, this is the most precious gift. Somebody who gives you food is giving you life. This is something. I want to go back home. I am tired. I cannot anymore. And she replied me, first, we love you and you're welcome. But please, you go further. The spirit of the walk was in one shot. So uh, no, go back home. I'm living here in the forest. This forest teach me many, many things. Listen what the nature have to say to us. We are part of the nature, so we will care ourselves. Welcome to Inspirations, podcast show about art, positivity and enthusiasm. And here is your host, Giuliano Marinkovic. Hello, everyone. And yes, this is our second episode of the podcast show Inspirations. And today I have prepared a wonderful guest for you all. But first, let me tell you a short story how I came uh, to an idea even to contact him in the first place. It was about two years ago in 2015. I can say that I'm avid walker. I like to walk a lot, especially uh, long walks across the nature. And one day I am walking and walking and at one moment the idea came to my mind and I was thinking, well, I'm just wondering, has anyone actually ever tried to walk across the earth, across our planet on foot? But it can be, right? The idea itself looks uh, sort of uh, impossible, how to achieve it, how to organize such a trip. So many logistical and technical problems would be on the way. So I immediately took my smartphone and just out of curiosity, I immediately entered search term, something like this, uh, man who walked across the world. And to my absolute surprise, I found a reference to Jean Beliveau, a man who actually achieved this goal. Back in 2000, he started his epic trip and it took him 11 years to complete his journey from Montreal, Canada, all across the world and to go back home again on foot. So, as I said, he traveled in full 11 years from 2000 to 2011. I immediately said, oh my God, I have to contact this man. I want to hear his story. I never heard about this before. So we started to communicate and that was back in June 2015. And it was just a period when he started with his new project to move and to live in the forest. And the first idea was to build a home in the remote forest. But the evolution of that project transferred into the specially designed dome inside of the forest. And finally, on the beginning of this week, on July 24th, 2017, I was finally successful to interview him. He was so kind and he found some time to be reachable over the phone due to his dome in the forest project. And I want to thank him once again so much for that. His adventure was so amazing that while we were doing an interview, I named him as a walking earthonaut. So, men who uh, explored planet on foot. So, coming up, Jean Beliveau, exclusively on OmniTalk Radio for podcast show Inspirations, directly over the telephone line from Montreal, Canada. I'm honored to welcome Jean Beliveau all the way from Montreal, Canada in my podcast show. Uh, it was some effort to connect with him finally, but it was such a great attempt. 
uh, and he did something really epic in his life. And what a guest. On August 18, 2000, at 9 a.m., Jean Beliveau left Montreal, Canada. His goal was to walk around the planet and to promote peace and non-violence for the profit of the children of the world. He traveled alone with three-wheeled stroller that hold a bit of food, his clothing, first aid kit, small tent and sleeping bag. How about that? It took him 134 months to accomplish his goal and he arrived back home on October 16, 2011, having walked 75,533 kilometers. He wore 54 pair of shoes and stayed in temples, parks and even jail. Jean, that was an amazing life story, something really extraordinary. But before we maybe go into details of your really uh, epic journey, maybe you could introduce uh, yourself to our listeners, how your life was looking before you uh, brought uh, to yourself this crucial des- decision of your life. Yeah, it's a pleasure to talk to you. So, uh um, I was born uh, in the eastern township, a place in the east of Montreal, uh, Quebec, uh, the, the Piedmont of the Appalachian Mountain. Then um, see, I finally I have two children. Then um, I mean, when the, the idea came, it was after a, a sort of midlife crisis, <laughs> sort of a hard time that I had. You know, I was working. I had my own business, uh, neon signs, all these things with about 15 employees. And suddenly my health condition was getting down. Then uh, I was thinking I will die inside of this business, a heart attack, or I don't know. Anyways, I had a sort of depression. Then... uh, to make uh, the story short, um, yeah, I had to uh, to close the business. Huh? Then I finally uh, didn't have nothing, uh, no job, uh, nothing in front of me. So I started. I was nearly on the on the street. Yes, I had my family, my life partner at that time, but uh, with nothing for me. So I started to walk uh, one square and the day after one more square and after a year I was walking about 10 kilometers a day and further I started to run again one square then uh, uh, more and more every day and we moved to Montreal because uh, we stayed in the countryside. And um, I followed always my training. Uh, this gave me happiness. Only this, I had a job uh, as a salesman for this industry, Neon Signs, in Montreal, but not happy. I was going to work and nearly crying. And what I'm doing with my life, uh, I just work for small money. And I think I had the life. There is much more things to see than only for for me that that time, huh? and only do a job, a dodo, a sleep job, and work and all these these uh, routines. So um, yeah, I I remember I was uh, running over the Jacques Cartier Bridge on the on the bridge. And we, I saw the St. Lawrence River and the city of Montreal and the, the big buildings. And I was suddenly uh, like, uh, I don't know, well, something gave me a push. Uh, I saw the sidewalk following down south. I said, this sidewalk touched all the home of the world. So it's like it was like if he was talking to me. Mm-hmm. You welcome. You can you can go. So I was thinking, and how many 
day they can join New York from Montreal, then why not uh, Mexico and the rest of the world? So I made a way, uh, like a path on the world map, uh, different paths. So uh, my dream to go walk around the world was crossing the five continents, symbolically. Then uh, I made the estimation kilometers and uh, how long could could it be? So it gave me about a decade. And suddenly I said, yes, I will go. I could not stop the idea. I think my depression was finished <laughs> because I had a dream. Sure. And um, yeah, then um, I didn't talk, tell my wife, my family about my project. I kept it secret because I was afraid that the, our beloved they could stop our dream and break it because they love you. So stay with us. So blah, blah. No, I just prepare all my mind secretly <laughs> without <laughs> for yeah. eight months. And then, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, I just prepare all this. I remember I had the sort of a vaccine, you know, but oral vaccine that I had to put in the fridge. But you know, the ladies, they, they own the fridge and all the space in the, fridge, the refrigerator. Oh, yeah. So I had to hide this uh, this medicine under the, the box of the eggs. <laughs> anyway, and that, uh, so, uh, yeah, I had to, to all prepare my things secretly anyway. So, uh, and, uh, and that yeah, was, so that it was, uh... came out like that. And that mm-hmm. was a especially hard moment when the moment arrived to broke the news to your wife, right? That was really hard time. And how this situation yeah. looked? It was a dramatic day, sure. Uh, I uh, I put a date, a date. Huh? I I I said I will start the day of my birth date. August 18, 2000, 45 years old. It was a Friday. And so uh, the time was going on, and I said, now I should talk to her. It was a morning, three weeks and a half before only. And I said to Luce, in the morning, we just put the breakfast on the table, and I said, uh, look, I'm going for a long walk, more than 10 years, so uh, I... I have to do so. She was looking me with her eyes, and uh, she said, "Will you come back at home sometime?" I said, "No, just after all." But you can come on my way yourself. And I wish she came every year for a sort of little honeymoon, and on my way different countries. And then uh, she uh, said, "It was. It is it." Uh, finished between us. I said, no, I love you. It's not for other purpose. I know you are a strong lady. You, you are able to live alone and uh, you have enough strength and force in your heart for that. And uh, I would like if we stay together, but for me, it was not really sure. Huh? She could say, go on your way, mate. Huh? It's, uh, it's too big for me. And then... Um, so finally, she, after a small time, reflection time, she said, okay, we try, we just try, we go and, and do this for peace. So for, there was, this, is, this walk is the walk of the good coincidence since that time, this morning, this, this morning when I, I said to her, and uh, there was a, a UNESCO decade about Peace and Nonviolence for Children, 2000, 2010. It was nearly the same time that I was going on, oh, on, on so this per- project. Per- perfect synchronization then with your plan. Yeah, <laughs> pure coincidence anyway. So, uh, and we dedicate, the, I say we because she was very involved in, in the walk, her, her in home and me on the way. And uh, we dedicate the uh, this walk for peace and nonviolence for children. She gave a soul on the walk. 
Yeah, so it, it was. Uh, I could definitely understand uh, everything that led to your decision, like you were saying, uh, re- uh, usual job through the day. You live from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and really, this initial inspiration. I, I could definitely recognize that when it happens in someone's life, and when you can't basically sleep you can't eat because you are living the dream and i can also see that you approached uh, your dream very practically you really thought about it deeply you calculated the daily uh, routes uh, how many miles it is possible to go through walk and so on and i'm very interested in that logistic part of the journey because it's not maybe discussed too much in other uh, interviews so how did you for example prepare the budget Uh, how did you organize the all what you have to carry is it hard to carry this trolley and so on i'm very interested in that technical parts yeah practically yeah we yeah it's nice dream but we uh, we have to go and survive so uh I, at that time, I had only four thousand Canadian dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe three three thousand euros. And then, um, and uh, I had to go with this, and uh, it cost about this every year anyway. So we can say about eighty percent of the need came from people on the way: food, clothes, or some equipment. Tent. I remember in Germany, mm. a company called Good Globetrotter gave me 1,000 euros of equipment to go to the Eastern Europe. It was the winter down Hungary and Serbia. Mm. And then uh, so uh, many helped, some airplane tickets, the, some they gave me. So uh, it was an uh, amazing gift as well. Uh, and all sort of glasses or dentist or service, medical service, sometimes for free, most of the time anyway. And then, uh, but you know, the fact that I was uh, at the level of the income income tax, I was uh, under her, my partner, so uh, she has, she had the right about a credit on her own, I mean, income, whatever. Mm. So about four thousand dollars. So uh, this is sort of our own government <laughs> legally. <laughs> so I uh, gave a push on it, but uh, so this is very unique because uh, we have to have agreement together, uh, the couple, the the two two of us. Anyway, on on this to uh, to have the finance for the for this, uh, but it's not big four thousand dollars, but it's an average, like in Africa for. Two years and a half, I was walking through from Cape Town up to Egypt to uh, Morocco two and a half years. So it cost about Mm $2,500, really not much. And uh, I remember in Japan, it was uh, two and a half months Mm -hmm. compared to two and a half years for Africa. It cost the same amount in Japan (laughs) anyway. So uh, different of the country, different of people and the cultures. And uh, yes, I had to sleep everywhere. I tried to uh, to have support, family, or sometime I slept with homeless in in parks or even shelters or jails. Sometimes I asked the police. For to have a place for the night, and they gave me the jail. And uh, it was funny because I remember in South Africa, uh, once one of them they forgot me the, the the day after, and they didn't. They, the the other shift of police was was thinking that I was a criminal that they didn't find my file. And I said, hey, yeah, I'm just a guest. I just leave me free. I'm just walking around the world. One moment, one moment. We have to yeah, to, have uh, to, to figure out what will happen now. So after a couple of hours, they <laughs> they set me free anyway. So it was funny, some sort of funny thing like that. And uh, yeah, on the bridge or... Uh, 
yeah, climbing uh, schools uh, or whatever. Yeah, uh, 1,600 families that I stay, they, they receive 1,600 families. Imagine uh, all uh, sort of people in the world, in the Americas, in the Andes, in Peru, or uh, in Africa, some uh, in Europe, uh, you can say very rich or otherwise very humble people like in India it's always it was always an honor for me it was like a something like a very sacred to be received in homes of all these people I think there is no king no president or emperor can that could say uh, that he was received by so many people is a, a great privilege it's it's an amazing experience absolutely and for an, for example we have astronauts we have cosmonauts and i would say you are uh, earthonaut sort of uh, because it's a really uh, absolutely uh, uh, unique insight that that you that you got and, and i think that your wife really did something great like you nicely said she gave a soul to your journey like uh, you merged it with the uh, un event and I think maybe that also uh, sort of uh, escalated you in a way that you were welcomed additionally as a good, noble, humble ambassador to the people which you had this uh, goal of your voyage. Was that the, also the part of the equation that helped you considerably? No, I, I did this very humbly. Uh, you see, sometime I was thinking I do nothing for the cause, but uh, so many organizations, they uh, contact me and they said, you are coming, we want to welcome you, we want to join you and to promote uh, and uh, to promote the cause. So uh, for me, it was always a great pleasure. So you know the organization for street children's or uh, anyway, all sort of uh, charities. So it was always a pleasure to promote them. When I came in town cities, and uh, and uh, we were making, uh, I mean, a press conference, uh, is it the word? Anyway, so, uh, and all, sure, the media was very really interested. The guy is coming, the guy who is walking around the world is there. <laughs> But for us, we had a strong message for peaceful children. So uh, we joined the crazy walk around the world with a noble cause, and it's it's helped them to promote themselves. Uh, when they're in Chile, mm. children's organizations, they came. We did, we made a walk huh, in the in the town, and the children was uh, had uh, some little signs promoting the children's rights educations and homes and things food and anyway so uh and uh, people was around and in philippines 1000 people came to walk with us walk with jean Beliveau and uh, they raised some money for themselves me i didn't raise money for one uh, one charity i prefer to give my my time for many of them through the world yeah. yeah, and uh, I did this very humbly, but sometimes I was thinking I don't do nothing myself. I could do more, but uh, people, they said, no, it's great what you are doing, and you inspired uh, our world. And I was thinking, me, I, I I, take, I take, I take, I take always, but I think people did look as well, and you see it's... Uh, we cannot uh, keep everything anyway. Uh, we have input, and we should have an, an output. We should give. Yes, uh, they absolutely. can give anyway. Yeah, they, they definitely recognize your noble and inspiring message, and that is so beautiful mm. in in the story. Uh, we can maybe go through some of the highlights of the journey. Of course, it is impossible to mention everything. Uh, I I guess that's a definitely think for a book uh, to explore but uh, I think uh, logistically you have gone from North to South America then South Africa to Europe Middle East Southeastern Asia Australia New Zealand and back 
to Canada. Is my uh, sort of breakdown of the route uh, roughly correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, from New Zealand to Vancouver. Vancouver walked through the continent to until home. And yeah, it, exactly. You oh, have great. You have that. And uh, maybe we can start with uh, North America. Uh, f- what what are your impressions uh, meeting people and meeting that culture, th- which was starting point of your journey? So how everything started there and with your impressions when you were meeting people in North America? You see uh, the theme that developed every continent developed in myself a theme, a reflection theme. Mm-hmm. theme. So uh, for America, it was much more the values when I crossed first, uh, I walk across the United States mm-hmm. and we see how people are. We have everything in the US, uh, very poor people, very rich people anyway, but it's, we say it's a developed country country and when i came in mexico wow everything everything changed huh? <laughs> it was another sort of world down south america south, central america and south america sometimes i was thinking wow we should all uh, demolish all these things and build on our own way huh? so uh, we have a sort of I mean, culture about construction and life and all these things, and the values. The values. I was thinking to always about this. It was in Peru. There was a guy came to walk with me one day, and we were talking about the, these values. He said to me something I will always remember. I said, Jean, I met some people. They they are they were so poor. The only value, the only thing they had was money. <laughs> Good insight. So I was was money. So poor. The people were so poor. The only thing they have is money. Hmm. So wow, what what is yeah. this? So I was thinking since since, since that time I I saw. The world, not with my eyes, but another way with my heart. Because the eyes, we see all these things that we say beautiful things. But you see, you go through all these people, we say humble people, but they have all all sort of values that we cannot touch. Love, sharing, I mean, uh, even spirituality or that these values that they are very very important so uh, you see uh, the heart ah, how, and they have strong network between them and they help each other these families and us our families are nearly breaking down we put our grandfather mother in in a building and I don't, we don't go to visit them then they keep their father their grandfather their grandmother and the family until they die and the, the, these values uh, we lost a lot I think we have to to learn a lot from uh, from them from these all all these people and sure it's not easy life is not easy everywhere but uh, I think uh, they have something beautiful that we have to learn from them. Yeah. And then uh, if we go to Africa, Africa was much more this, uh, what came out, the spirituality, the religions, or you see the these mega religions uh, that we have, and also uh, animist, the, these uh, sort of spirituality, oh, tribal sure. spirituality. Mm-hmm that it was a beautiful evolution of thinking on my way through Africa because some, they are very near of the ancestors, uh, the spirit of the ancestors. They do ritual when they don't have rain or they have some disease or spiritual to 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 say, they are saying to the ancestors, please tell the creator now, because you are very near the Creator now, mm. so to give us some water, some rain for the cultures, 
and uh, they are very near the nature also yeah so and i get i got to these mega religions as well huh? islam uh, the, the the christianism different kind of islam and christianism because there are there are so many of them and then europe when i came out came in europe uh, Yeah, you, you much more politics. That, yeah, yeah do, sorry. You, des- you described that, if I recall, as cultural shock after you left Africa. Oh yeah, <laughs> sure. Africa is something amazing. It's another planet. Uh, I enjoyed very much, and I had hmm. some hard time once. I can say in hmm. Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a country, very special country. They were never, they were never conquered. Uh, about. Maybe six years by the Italian, and no more. Mm. It's a nation that I think they had about three thousand years or five thousand years, never conquered anyway. And then uh, it's not easy to to catch their culture. So I was walking and tried to figure out how they are. The first you love a country, and after you say, "Wow, what happened? I don't catch all these things." the behavior of people and uh, so there were children walking around me 30 40 children dancing nearly around me and provoking me and trying to to talk with me but in a completely another language they, they couldn't say any any word couldn't couldn't say in any word in english i said sometime Hello, how are you? And they will reply, how are you, how are you, how are you, how are you? <laughs> no, 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 okay. you reply, Limitations. fine, thank you. So they were they were talking, fine, thank you, fine, thank you, fine, thank you. Oh, it was so hard. They was always repeating what I, I was doing. All, anyway, all my just, just tool and things. So I came tired and I mm. sent an email to lose my partner and I want to go back home. I am tired. I cannot anymore. I don't know what happened with me. And she replied me further. First, we love you and you welcome. But please, mm. you go further. You have to accomplish your work. Because if you go back to home, it's like you did nothing. I said, I want to go back home. Then, then go again on my way. But the spirit of the walk was in one shot, huh? one one shot so uh no go back home anyway so i was thinking since uh, i go and i yeah it came better after yeah she absolutely supported you all the way incredible yeah she was the kind of lady because we are not uh, together anymore so in 2015 yeah. we took our own way of life that's life huh? incredible huh? we were since about 28 years together, <laughs> 11 years on the way, and we had a beautiful love story together. Then, um, yeah, and she was the perfect lady for for this kind of crazy... I think we we were the, the perfect couple for this kind of crazy uh, endeavor. Yeah, that, that's a definitely also a crucial part of the walk. Without her, probably it will be much harder for you too. If there was not such a support. oh, I would never do yeah. this. Yeah, uh, without her. Yeah, I think we we had a, a mission. You see what is a mission when you put the goal at, at in your heart, in your soul, in yourself, and uh, for two people and all family, my own children, and I. I became grandfather on the way, yeah. So uh, even the the grandchildren, yeah. You have to go. You have to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they were your fuel to, through through the voyage. And uh, while we were talking about some of these really beautiful, inspiring events, maybe we can shortly uh, go back uh, to the South America again. And I do recall one really uh, also uh, beautiful event that you called uh, uh, when you meet so-called Potato Kid. Can you a little bit explain this more? Ah, wow. We in in Peru, right? That. You see, Giuliano, I had many support in uh, the world. So uh, 
like I told you, uh, I have plane ticket. But this was nearly biggest, the biggest guest I never had mm. on all my way. I was walking the mountain, the Andes, and uh, small children was uh, behind me and shouting, Senor, Senor, behind me. I just turned to see him. He was running with his two hands joined together and with a beautiful smile, he opened his hand and there were three little potatoes, small potatoes, ready to eat uh, from the fresh harvest in the field. And uh, with a beautiful smile, he gave me these three potatoes that I was nearly crying. I said, this, this is precious. This is the most precious gift I never had. On all my way, just this, this beautiful smile. I, I didn't know what to do. I just hugged him. And uh, after I left him, I said, oh, what I could do with this? <laughs> and the way we, we say, uh, when we, we receive something, uh, just give to the another guy and other people, uh, give back to, uh, to others and to the humanity. And yeah, when... You have this uh, awareness that mm. people give you food, so they give you life. Imagine somebody who gives you food is giving you life. This is something. Yeah, mm. a- absolutely altruistic. It's like the essence of the positivity of the human soul that you exchange in that moment. Mm. That, yeah, really this is uh, this is yeah, that's right. And uh, I remember in Nepal that humble people they was receiving me, receiving me, and and I was uh, yeah, just an example. I was just they gave me a, a little bag of food, rice, and I was uh putting my my belong in my buggy in my inside of my three wheel stroller my tent my sleeping bag my things I just and i i i i, let, I put the the bag the bag on, on the soil huh, on the on the floor anyway so <clears throat> and to follow my to arrange my things in my buggy immediately there were a guy he took the ba- the bag he said we don't Put food on the on the floor. We we raise food. <laughs> you I don't know if you understand what I mean. So we don't we don't put food on the soil. Huh? So we just have to raise it. So he he brought me for me. He kept him in his hand the time that I finished to arrange my things inside of my buggy, and after he gave me yeah. So. Uh, there are something always some behave I don't know that we should understand from different kind of culture. This is not easy, but we learn always uh, from them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, through the way, another astonishing things happened. I guess when you have such an inspiring goal and message, everything is possible. So you also encountered some gangs through the way through your voyage, and actually, when they realized what your cause is, they decided to help you. Can you also explain these mm. events to us? Oh yeah, like in Central America, or came came once in South Africa. Nearly the same story that I was uh, asking a guy to bring me. It was the, nearly the night, uh, the, the the evening, then uh, dark, and I asked a guy, "Can you bring me to the the police station?" And he said yes. So he brought me. Not to the really to the police station, but in on another way, it was coming dark, and I said to him, I because I it was suspicious. I said to him, I'm walking from Canada and walk around the world with this little Spanish that I spoke at that time, 
and uh, for for the children and uh, all these things, and we did nothing. So uh, suddenly, after a walk about a couple of minutes more, and he said, uh, one moment, he said, you walk for the children for peace. And then I said, yeah, uh, that's what I'm trying to, to tell you. So he said, uh, well, this is a beautiful cause. He showed me scars, bullet scars on mm-hmm. his arms and, and legs. He was a child soldier mm-hmm. at, at, when he was young. So he said, he gave me finally uh, the, the, the equal amount of about $1. And he said, this is a good cause. He said, you should follow. The police station is not on that way. I was bringing you to another uh, whatever. So, uh, and he said, go on this way. You will find uh, further uh, all these fire station, police station, because I asked them for, to have a place for the night. Anyway, so I think the guy was, he had in his spirit to stole me all my things. And then, uh, so we changed the mind. So it was, you see, uh, in South Africa, uh, I want to say before, before all, when you go for a noble cause, for something that the world want, like peace or whatever, or other, other things, it's, for me, it was better than me. It was higher than me, this cause. But it brought me to people who was very high. Like I had the great honor to meet Mr. Mandela oh. in South Africa. So this is was uh, another good coincidence uh, in Durban, South Africa. And uh, Mr. Mandela said, uh, people need people like you. The world need people like you. Simple word. And uh, we took picture, uh, surely, of course. Then uh, I showed this picture on my way to the people, to the chief uh, villages in Africa and then Europe or whatever in China. And this gave me protection. Mr. Mandela, I can say, he made a big part of my way, big, big part of my way. So... Um, yeah, he's a great guy. He was a great guy. He was the, the father of the humanity, I, I guess. Eh? So, uh, and I had a great honor to meet uh, three other, other peace uh, Nobel winners. And mm-hmm. uh, in, before in South South America, uh, in Argentina first, uh, second, yeah, first in Costa Rica, Adolfo Pérez Esquivel. Uh, this is, was in Argentina, uh, and Oscar Arias Sanchez in Costa Rica, then uh, Kim De Jong in Korea, South Korea. Oh my God! And Mr. Mandela, of course. Wow! Mm. Wow! Uh, you, you also had interesting experience. I think it was in Philippines when you got the escort of the police protection, right? Something. Mm. Like that. Yeah, I had about nine countries. I was. Uh, that I that they gave me the support of the escort, uh, police escort, some conflictual zone. Yeah, Philippines was quite heavy. Uh, the eastern part of India also, hmm. and uh, Egypt, of course. Yeah, and sometimes twelve police walking with me. And yeah, in Philippines it was about four hundred kilometers, and uh, the sometimes. I was walking with guys from the army with all the weapons on them. And sometimes even children came to walk with us and we were shocking, shouting, we want peace, we want peace, peace in Mindanao. Mindanao, it was the region in Philippines, South Philippines. Peace in Philippines, peace in the world. And we were shouting this and surrounded by army uh, with all these equipments and it was like uh, ironic because uh, you see you walk for peace and with guys full of weapon around of you and I said to them I want to meet the chief of the rebel 
rebel groups and uh, they said no you will you will you will be kidnapped I said wow am i kidnapped now <laughs> <laughs> anyway so uh, i had to walk with them and uh, yeah it was uh, it, and quite heavy heavy time and nice as well because uh, they were very gentle with me and anyway uh, the world i i was thinking always i think because i was received like in sudan by sympathizing the Osama bin Laden, so uh, and I was welcomed by them inside of their their place and homes and oh. chatting and and we were looking at the TV. The enemies, Mr. Bush in USA. I was thinking, but in what side am I now? Am I the other side? And they received me well, and they said, "You go for peace. We support you. We what you what you want. You tell us. Uh, you need anything, we give you." And I was thinking, but why we are fighting so much? Uh, I was thinking finally after reflection, because everybody wants peace, but the peace is not the same. Vision. We don't have the same vision of peace. That's why we are fighting. They have a vision about peace, and we have, and even in our family, in ourselves, huh? we have we struggle in ourselves with <laughs> sometimes, and in, with a couple of people, uh, men and women in home, and we struggle always, and we. Uh, because everybody wants peace, but peace in our own way, yeah? not the way of the others. Anyway, I think life is a compromise in a way. Yeah, yeah. So you definitely met so many variety of different groups and nationalities, and that leads me to 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 the next question. I mean, the the possibilities are simply staggering, and and all the possibilities that could happen on your journey. Uh, what would you say was the most dangerous event that you encounter? I guess you can be careful how much you want, but simply the number of days, different uh, configuration of terrain, different countries, something definitely probably happened on the way that was dramatic. Yeah, I think uh, the most dangerous uh, thing maybe is the human being. I mean, uh, the traffic, the simple traffic. <laughs> <laughs> because I was walking on the road. Sometimes people think about bandit or wild animals or, I don't know, disease or thing like that. But uh, you walk on the side of the people, so you, you have many, many cars and trucks and all these vehicles going so fast and they can hit you like nothing. And anyway, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I went through, uh, I was thinking, talking about wild animals. In Africa, I remember I, I was walking, people said, next you will pass through a, uh, where, where do, there, there are some lions. Mm. So I said, what I have to do? But you, you just keep walking. And uh, so, wow, but uh, okay, I go. So, And it was a small road, like the Savannah Road, and very small dirt, dirt road. Then uh, I had my two paper sprays in my hand because lions have eyes, huh? they have eyes, so we can sh shoot them with paper spray, <laughs> I imagine. And the wind came, I was facing the wind, so I was always looking behind if they could smell me. I don't know these animals. Finally, I saw there was a colony of baboons, baboon, the monkeys. Oh. So I said, oh, I'm okay, maybe there was, I think there is no lions here now. And uh, you see that you, you are thinking maybe I would be eating because I started, the day I started, I, that I decided to go, I said, I prefer to be eaten by the lions in Africa than by the society. Huh? <laughs> I don't know, uh, suicide or whatever we can say, we can think. And uh, at least I would I would I would see much more huh? from home to Africa. I would have uh, the privilege to to see and to feel a lot of things that many people they, they don't have the the chance to go to to see. 
and I will give food for the animals <laughs> myself. <laughs> anyway, so when I was walking through this uh, dangerous place, I said, no, uh, don't eat me now. I'm not ready. Uh, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> anyway, so I got to the other side and there were a police, a little tiny police station. And the guy said, you have a gun. You 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 must have a gun. You you come from this very dangerous place, man. You were lucky. <laughs> you were lucky to be alive. I said, no, I don't have any gun. I walk for peace. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah. I I I know that I I went through dangerous place or situations. Uh, there were even in Canada here. I was walking through, and one of these evening, uh, thunder shower, the lightning thing. The, the lightning went uh, come and hit the soil just about a couple of meters in front of me. Pong, lightning, thunk. <laughs> Lightning. I have the video myself. So anyway, we can. Uh, I, I was. I was lucky. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I think they tried yeah. also to to rob you in one country. Was it in Africa or somewhere? And then police car stopped near you or something like that. And you mean, uh, yeah, yeah, to ask me uh, sometimes the passport. They they want to see who I am and I know I was received by so many police so I know them but uh, sometimes some they they are they they want to show they are very strong and by the law or by the book on about the law and then uh, in uh, um, Iran oh, okay. I was uh, I was I don't know if you are telling about this story but they want to anyway. Sure. So police uh, just stopped uh, and they said, passport, passport. Hmm. So I said uh, to the, I was looking, these guys, four guys, this, the, 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 they were the, the nation, the nation, national police. Anyway. So uh, I was looking, these guys, I said, you will not get my passport. First, you say, welcome in Iran. Second, May I have your passport, please? So you will not get my passport. Sorry, I gave them a paper. Then uh, you have my my address, internet, uh, email, all these things, my website, all these things. You contact me. Okay, bye. I just took the handle of my buggy and follow to walk. <laughs> Imagine, I could go straight to jail. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> slept in the desert. Then the day after, at noon, I was in the, the center of a town, and the guy came, a police, uh, with, uh, I mean, civil clothes. clothes. Then um, he said, uh, we are police, and uh, first he said, welcome, with a beautiful smile, he said, welcome to Iran. <laughs> he said, uh, may we have your passport, please? I said, yes, no problem. So I gave them, and in a way, I... And they said, uh, you take picture of our country, is it? Oh, yes, you have so beautiful, beautiful country. Then the people, they are so nice and they receive me everywhere. Oh, beautiful country, Iran. Anyway, so, uh, and they said, may we have you, you see your photo? Yes, yeah, sure. I passed my camera and the, the police were looking, the images cling, cling, every single pictures. And after I was wondered that I took a pictures, a pictures I did, I didn't know, but it was a secret place. I don't know about their intelligence or I don't know mm. police police place. <laughs> and they, they, they didn't see finally. I just after just zoom it, and we see this uh, this building anyway. Um, probably from this building they were watching me and anyway the many countries it was watching me even in china i could feel that i was uh, mm. i was followed by i don't know intelligence or thing like that anyway yeah could could happen yeah definitely your trip was a unique insight into the soul of the planet i would say and you met so many people so many different nationalities and when you Take a breakdown, over, holistic overview of everything. 
uh, definitely, of course, every one of us have their daily communications with our family, with our friends. But that circle of people is still limited, sort of. But you saw it all and uh, like no other human being. Uh, and, and how would you say when you make an overview breakdown of the human soul, of the human relations, would you say that we are dominantly positive species after all? Or would you say still that there is so many evil in the world? What would you say it's more prevalent? Yeah, we should be careful about the human being. Even myself, I have to be careful of myself mm. because I am one of them. Yeah, I don't know. Now we are talking uh, about uh, the the nature, environment, and uh, all this biodiversity that we are losing. For me, it was like um, where we are going. We are still fighting, and uh, yeah. in the same way, we are losing our own nature and this is the this nature they feed us this nature they gave they give they give, their, they give us life and we don't care we just take and take and i think uh, yeah we should uh, be careful otherwise the people of the world is there is another face uh, a beautiful face beautiful face when i came after all my walk uh, it was i was about two years after in 2011 i finished in october 2011 mm. and i was so uh i mean negative about the world we are oh. we should i was like a, a pessimist <laughs> okay. and after i just changed my mind i changed my mind this is all we we should always try to look for to have a better world i i mean cultivate it's a it's a hard job yes cultivate ourselves to see the world with the eyes of love together and share much more and and uh, yeah raise our awareness for about the this uh, this world and uh, the nature and children and and what what for what we are here on the planet so uh, anyway uh, now i got some hope uh, because uh, maybe science are going to get much more inside of the life mm. and uh, more we go more maybe simple we could understand i'm living here in the forest mm. And then, uh, and this forest teach me, teach me many, many things. I think we should learn, uh, learn from the nature and listen what the nature has to say to us. And from that time, we will, uh, we will care, care the nature and we are part of the nature. So we will care ourselves anyway. Yeah. And before we go to the forest, and that was my concluding question, sort of, let's just go quickly towards the day when you returned home. So how was the experience when you finally entered to your house after 11 years? Uh, you have been with your family again and everything. So how the relationship looked and your feelings of conclusion, closure? Oh, yeah. When we, you are finish all this 11 years and two months walking around the world and you are welcomed by many people but mostly this is what what is very important by your own family mm. this is so sweet you're coming home but in the same time you feel you 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 lost because you are going in a small apartment that is the world was my home and uh, it, it's very really strange to uh, to go back in this sort of life. Uh, many uh, public speaking to do or interviews or or the books. The the book is not yet in English anyway in <laughs> Russia and different other languages. Anyway, so uh, and uh, after uh, after about four years uh, in 2015. Uh, and before I just purchased pers uh, a piece of land in, uh, in the forest, on the top, top of the of a mountain in the eastern townships. 
And um, uh, I'm building a geodesic dome. This is very special. Mm -hmm. It's a home. I mean, geodesic, it's a dome. Huh? Bon. Yeah. So it's my home and about 12 meters diameters. And there's only one window, very wide window, about uh, how, how, how I can say in meters. It's about uh, the window can be uh, 15 meters by 4 meters high. Mm -hmm. So only one one window facing the south. And then uh, so uh, I have all the scenic of the forest in front of me and beautiful flowers and some deers <laughs> eating my flowers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's funny anyway. So, um, yeah, this dome... What inspired me to build this dome? It's the you see the human being, first human being they they, they used to live in round home, huh? round home, the hut in Africa, the igloo in uh, mm. North America in the in the Great North, or uh, the yurt huh? in Mongolia, something round. So it's open space, and this is what I want to to experience to live so it's it's another sort of lifestyle completely different and it's a big challenge build this sort of building because angles and angles angles it takes about four five times more than a square home but i don't care i i got i have the time like my world walk so uh, it's like a world walk for me as well Exactly. Yeah. And it's a quite a project. We exchanged, for example, emails in 2015, I do recall, I have it in front of me, <laughs> when you said to me, uh, this week I'm moving with the project to build my tiny home in remote forest. From world walking man, I'm going to be a hermit. So this is sort of a... I guess of the grid approach, but I'm interested to know how house is powered. Is it solar powered or how do you? Oh yes, uh, uh, okay. yeah. Finally, the tiny home came out as a dome. It changed <laughs> the project, changed in a way. It's, it's a uh -huh. sort of crazy story again. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, and uh, because the law didn't permit ah. to have a tiny home, so I okay. said uh, the municipality. I said. Okay, I will build a dome, a temporary dome. Then we will figure out later. So finally, I built, I built this about a solid, a solid dome anyway. So the municipality they gave me a, what they call a forest camp, the status of forest camp. Yeah? So uh, because there is nothing about, uh, I mean the the, con the the construction code here. It's all all the all different, but they are very happy anyway. So. Uh, and your question, why, sorry, because yeah. my preamble uh, was too yeah, yeah. high, too I, long. No worries. I was asking about uh, d uh, how the dome is yeah. powered through solar power or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to, uh, because we are completely off-grid, uh, far away in the forest. Mm. In the winter, I have to walk one kilometer in snow, one kilometer in snow, mm. to get the, my place and uh, with buggies behind to bring my, uh, I mean, my food, all my things. There. So it's multi-energy. Huh? I have a generator, oh, okay. a generator, so uh, solar panel, uh, propane, propane gas, huh? and uh, wood for uh, eating. I have, um, I mean, a, a mass stove, about uh, 14 tons of, uh, like, a, it's like scul sculptural, the kind of culture that I have my lazy boy, my lazy boy, uh, that I can sit down or like a couch. Mm. That, that this is all concrete, well done, very well done, like a sculpture. That uh, the pipe of the the exhaust goes 40 feet inside, 40 foot inside serpentine, inside of the mass heating the mass, mm. so the mass come warm. And give the warmth for when I when I don't eat the the, the stove. So anyway, it's, it's very very simple, but it, it's very very nice. It's a, something like I enjoy very much. Anyway, this kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I am not so ermite yet yeah, because some some people they come to visit me and uh, I enjoy very much. And as well, uh, like uh, I was uh, last fall uh, in Europe. 
or oh. some public speaking. Then, uh, oh. yeah, so uh, and this winter I have the project to walk maybe uh, Cuba, Cuba from the west to the east, Cuba, the island, the island oh. of Cuba, Cuba. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I, I, you see on the on the map I didn't walk Colombia. Ah, okay. Hey, that, it was too dangerous that, at the time, right? Yeah, it was a very dangerous country. So in 2015, I did this. I walked. I did walk through uh, from Panama City to the border of Ecuador, Ecuador mm. through uh, Colombia. So, uh, and I maybe I'm one of the only Canadian maybe to have got passed through the with that we we call the Darien Gap. It is one of the hardest jungles in the world. If you see uh, on the internet, Darien, Darien Gap. So okay. in uh, Colombia and Panama, the border, kind of uh, Panama and Colombia. So I achieved to get through this jungle. So it was, uh, I'm very, very proud to, to, to have this is done. So anyway, and uh, I, it was three months walking through uh, the Colombia. So... I would love further to walk, I don't know, Libya. Maybe it's not the time now. I, I don't know. Because that that time I didn't walk Libya. They didn't, Qaddafi didn't give me the visa. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. so uh, we'll see further. But this winter, maybe I would love to walk through Cuba anyway. Absolutely. Uh, I have seen, uh, and you mentioned also that you have your book, but in French. I tried to search it over Amazon or something, couldn't find it. Uh, so for the end, maybe you can say a little bit about your book, where people can get it, uh, where they can contact you, your website, and those things uh, where they We can. have uh, my publisher. We have only a French version in France mm-hmm. and French Canadian. And then... Uh, in Russia and in South Korea for now and not yet in English mm. so uh, but I think in Amazon uh, the, the the title is L'homme qui marche the, the man who walks I guess oh. L'homme qui marche oh, and okay. for the ones who can uh, read the French and uh, some they can maybe read the uh, Russian but I don't know the title in Russia it might be the same but translate in, in the Russian language Long the, mm. the the man who walks yeah uh, any chance for the English translation in near future uh, hope so hope so uh, my publisher is a French from France from Paris but uh, we never know it might happen one of these days this is, might be pos- might be possible I don't I really still don't know for it's hope so yeah, yeah. It, I, I think it's really unfortunate and any publisher, I think it's so obvious that this book needs a release in English. I, I would be definitely one of the buyers if it will ever happen. Oh, thank so, you so much. Absolutely. So, thank you so much. Yeah. And for the end, what is the website where then people can learn more about your route, archives, photos and everything? Yeah, you can find... Uh, Anyway, Jean Beliveau, The Walking Man, or something like that on Google, or triple W's, and that, yeah, sure. But another triple W's, ALK.org, like World Wide Walk, www.walk.org. That's great. It was such a pleasure to talk with you, Jean, uh, today. And I think your message, we can conclude with that. Of course, like you said, you encountered uh, so many great things, uh, so many positive and also some negative. But I think what is there is that positivity and potential in human soul that every one of us have. And we should continue to amplify that, to work on that, because as a civilization, we have such a potential, but unfortunately, we also have counter potential to destroy ourselves, and that will be the most unfortunate thing ever. Yeah, but I think uh, we have to give hope to the these next generation than uh, to okay. have a better world. And uh, yeah, we uh, there are many many beautiful things in the world, and 
if we go with a positive attitude, exactly. we, we will receive positive attitude. And every one of us should try and work daily on that to make a better and more positive life for everyone. Mm. Thank you so much, John. It was such a pleasure. Uh, finally, we were able to connect ourselves. I was so excited. Thank you so much. And let's stay in touch. If you will have any other event, feel free to send me an email. Uh, or if it, anything will happen, I will be always glad to promote your work. This was a pleasure. Chinganu, you're a very kind guy, so all the best for you and your family. Plenty of love. Absolutely for you too, Jean. All the best wishes and have a great day. Ciao.